Ralph, I know, I know you, you wanted to talk a little bit about some of the effects of gun violence that are not direct and that your technology might help disrupt. Sure. So I think um, it's, it's really important for folks to understand that gun violence does not, in terms of criminal gun violence, does not equal homicides or even gunshot wound victims. Um, in fact, uh, we know that guns are probably fired 100 times for every homicide. Um, and there is a real issue with, I'll call it vicarious victimization that takes place in these communities that are dealing with ongoing, persistent, and intense gunfire incidents where um, an individual might not ever be hit. And so that, that's a really big problem. And I think if we understood uh, better the downstream consequences of what it means to be traumatized because you're exposed to this level of gun violence, um, our hair would literally be on fire about the issue of ongoing persistent gun violence, particularly, again, in uh, at-risk, underserved uh, communities. We sometimes talk about this vicarious victimization after a mass shooting event when, um, and these are very tragic events to be sure, and we're talking to uh, children that are, you know, that survive these events, but dealing with the trauma of just being exposed to that event in that one particular instance. And, and I know there's a lot of conversations out there around what it means in terms of the perceived uh, level of safety in a, in a classroom. I can tell you in uh, communities like Baltimore, Oakland, uh, Kansas City, you pick it, Miami Gardens, these are small, medium, large cities, a lot of students uh, in at-risk, underserved communities feel the safest place for them to be is in a classroom. But getting to and from their classroom, to, from their home, is really, really quite challenging. And this, this point was really made for me, actually, uh, when I first joined the company about um, eight and a half years ago when I did have the opportunity to do a ride-along in um, Baltimore. And um, it, these are supposed to be fairly um, innocuous events where they're, you know, taking someone like me in a suit, driving around and, you know, it, you know showing me what's what. And there was a call uh, because there was a homicide and they needed some additional resources there to control the, the scene. So this individual that was taking me along had to reluctantly kind of take me to this particular event, which I was actually pretty excited about because I'm in the business of gun violence uh, reduction and prevention through our technology. And I was girding myself for um, what I was going to see because, of course, I'd never witnessed uh, personally a homicide, even though I grew up in uh, Oakland, California. And when we got to the scene, there was a young man there, probably uh, no, no older than 14 years old, um, laying in the middle of the street. And I thought that was going to be the thing that was most upsetting to me. But actually, what was most upsetting to me was to see the non-reaction of young people around the scene. It was like nothing had ever happened. And I just thought about my children, um, and I've got four kids, if they ever had been exposed to someone, one of their friends possibly, laying in the middle of the street, um, shot dead, uh, it, was a, it was a head wound as well, I mean, that would have like completely uh, freaked them out. They wouldn't have been able to sleep at night, and yet these kids were just kind of going about their normal business, you know, riding their bicycles, skipping ropes, the, the whole nine yards, and that is the cost of gun violence. And we, haven't, our, we, we don't have a, a really good way to um, uh, put a number on that, but I've got to believe inherently that that has all manner of downstream negative consequences in terms of you know, graduation, matricul matriculation uh, rates from high school, um, you know, testing, uh, teenage pregnancies, drug use, alcohol use, uh, the whole nine yards. And if we ever put a number on that, again, this will be something that we would pay much more attention to. And there's a lot more empathy, I think, we would have with these victims that typically, when you talk about a homicide victim uh, in uh, these communities, oftentimes they're young black males. Um, sometimes it involves, um, it's very hard to distinguish in our own minds, I think, um, the victim from the perpetrator because there might have been both in gangs or whatever. And we, we tend to uh, make the victim a perpetrator in the same sentence. So it's very easy for us to have a little bit of an arm's length distance on this particular, uh, particular issue and not get emotionally connected. But I think if you, you know, realize that there was a child that uh, had to go to bed to the sound of gunfire, wake up to the sound of gunfire, maybe walk across yellow tape on their way to school, I think we would think about this issue uh, very differently.